Thank you all for joining us this morning. I'm Wanda Legrand, Chief Student Services Officer, and I'm joined by Dr. Tony Watlington, Chief of Schools. We, we invited you here to answer your questions and to reiterate to our students, families, staff, and this community that we have been and will continue to be proactive in planning and implementing the district's response if and when we are impacted by COVID-19. Last week, under the direction of our superintendent, Dr. Sharon Contreras, we convened the 10 largest school districts in the state, along with state and local health care officials, to discuss and collaborate on plans that put safety and prevention as our top goals. We hope the coronavirus never impacts Guilford County and our schools. However, we know that that thought would be short-sighted. We understand that this crisis is an involve, involve, evolving situation, and we have done our best to stay on top of communications and guidelines from the Centers for Disease Control, the North Carolina Department of Health and Human Services, and the Guilford County Department of Health, as well as the Guilford County Emergency Management Service, along with our internal teams. On yesterday, we presented our COVID-19 response plan to our principals and the Board of Education. Our plan is a four-phase strategy that considers multiple scenarios. Currently, we are in phase one of the plan, which went into effect when the COVID-19 first, first case was confirmed in North Carolina. Phase two will be enacted if and when there is a confirmed case in Guilford County. Phase three will begin if there is a confirmed case at one of our schools. And phase four takes place if there are multiple schools or buildings within Guilford County Schools that have a confirmed case of COVID-19. So now briefly, I'd like to <coughs> discuss the phases of our plan and a few of the strategies that we have implemented. As I shared earlier, for the beginning phase, phase two, <clears throat> phase one is because there is a a, an occurrence that occurred in North Carolina. In phase one, we conducted several strategies to make sure that we have prevention measures, measures in place to address the concerns that could impact our buildings. We purchased several large quantities of hand soap, paper towels, hand sanitizers, and dispensers. We also purchased disinfectant wipes. We produced fact sheets and communicated with our families and our principals. We conducted several meetings, and those meetings were for us to create our preventive strategies. Those meetings involved the one that I mentioned earlier with the large school districts, also meetings that we've had internally. We've had principal meetings in order to prepare as a part of phase one. The third piece about our phase one prevention strategies is training. So we've held training for our bus drivers, trainings for our lead custodians, as well as provide guidelines for front office staff within our buildings and our schools. If we move on, if things occur and we move on to phase two, meaning there's a confirmed case in Guilford County, our goal with that phase is to limit community spread to our schools without disrupting learning. Within phase two, some of the strategies that we would implement is that we would limit visitors that could attend our schools and our classes. We would also limit public meetings and implement more virtual meetings. We will adjust how our facilities are used internally as well as externally. For phase three, if there's a confirmed case that's actually in Guilford County Schools, the goals are to limit community spread within schools and to other schools while reducing impacts to learning. During that phase, we will cancel public meetings and gatherings we also would close those impacted schools to do a deep cleaning to prepare them for reopening. And we would launch our district prepared home resources for learning for students in schools that were closed. The final phase, which is phase four, um, that would be if that would occur if there were confirmed cases in multiple GCS schools. Our goals for that phase would be to limit community spread within schools and to other schools. We do anticipate that major disruptions to learning may be possible if it's in several schools. For that phase, we would close the impacted schools, do the cleaning that's necessary to reopen those schools, and also launch those resources for home learning. Dr. Watlington will bring us up to date with some of our other preventative measures. Uh, good morning. Uh, I just want to uh, echo Dr. Legrand's comments that uh, we do have a very good plan in place in Guilford County Schools. Uh, last week, uh, representative administrators from the 10 largest school districts actually came to Greensboro 
And under Dr. LaGrange's leadership, we had an opportunity to work together uh, to make sure that all those districts had a, comp a comprehensive plan. Uh, Guilford County Schools, uh, not surprisingly, uh, really did some good work to lead that uh, work. A uh, couple of things I want to just highlight. First, um, with spring break fast approaching, uh, we are requesting that parents or guardians inform schools by telephone if anyone in their household visits any of those areas that the Centers for Disease Control has listed as uh, tra problematic areas to include the People's Republic of China, South Korea, Italy, and Iran. Uh, we're asking those students to voluntarily stay home for 14 days uh, before they return to school so that we uh, are well prepared to prevent any uh, uh, additional uh, problems with uh, COVID-19. Uh, as Dr. LeGrand said, we met with all of our principals. Uh, they are well prepared. We want our community to know that. Uh, they are holding faculty meetings yesterday and today to make sure their faculties are aware of the details of our plan. In addition to providing lots of posters to remind kids and uh, adults to wash their hands regularly, uh, there, there have been extra uh, quantities of hand sanitizers, soap, paper towels, and other cleaning supplies that have been delivered to all 125 schools. Uh, custodians have been participated in required training for all of those schools. Uh, so hygiene and cleanliness are a major focus in those schools. And as Dr. LeGrand uh, referenced, uh, should it become necessary, the district is prepared to utilize online learning <clears throat> if there becomes necessary in any schools that would need a closure because of uh, uh, the COVID-19 coronavirus. So in summary, I would just like to, re we'd like to remind our community that our principals and school staffs have a very good plan, they're well prepared, and that safety and the health and well-being of our students and the staff and families are a top priority in Guilford County Schools. And with that, we'll turn it back over to Dr. LeGrand. Thank you. Again, we want the community to know that we are monitoring this developing situation closely. We have daily meetings with the superintendent's cabinet as well as my team. We're staying in regular contact with our partners, and we will maintain and update our website regularly so that information is available to our students, families, employees, and the community. And our website is gcsnc.com. We want to thank our communities for their support. With our work ahead of this crisis, we hope to navigate it with confidence and that we have done all we know to ensure the safety and well-being of our students. We will now open for any questions you have for us. If you have questions, if you could raise your hand. I'll give you the <clears throat> If schools do have to close, what's going to happen with school lunches and meals for students who depend on them? If school had to be closed, the district is working on contingency plans wherein uh, students could receive those meals in alternate locations, as some school districts we've found have done that across the country. Uh, that might be local rec centers or other places, and those plans, those plans are under development. But we do have that as a focus, since many kids do get their meals and other services during the school day. For our families that also receive those backpacks that might go home from our community agencies, um, we're working with them to create those contingency plans as well so that we can get that, those resources to the families. And you spoke about spring break, but there's also field trips coming up in April to areas like Williamsburg and D.C. and those states and cities have mm -hmm. more cases of coronavirus than we do. Are those field trips going to be canceled? And if so, will parents get reimbursements? We have a list of all the field trips that are planned in the district through the conclusion of the school year. At this time, there are no uh, bans on any field trips. Uh, however, we do monitor it daily and we follow the guidance from the Centers for Disease Control about places that we ought to avoid. And on a day-by-day -day basis, we'll continue to review those. And if uh, cancellations become necessary, we'll communicate that. But at this time, field trips that are planned are on go. And if a student does have to self-quarantine for 14 days, are those days going to count against them, or is online learning going to be utilized? Uh, the days would certainly not count against the students because they are absent for no, because of no fault of their own and we will uh, code those students appropriately. How are you going to police students and parents to let you guys know if they've been traveling or not? Because it's, if it's up to the parent, what, how are you gonna make sure that they're telling you what's going on? 
Um, what we do is to communicate with our parents and share our expectations. Uh, we know that our parents want their children as well as other children to be safe. And so that's our suggestion. And that's why we're asking them to let us know and to self-quarantine. <clears throat> At NOV, as, as Dr. Watlington mentioned, will provide the resources for students while they're home. <coughs> but that helps to keep their child safe as well as students and families in their communities. I'd also note that we really do uh, want students who are sick or staff members who are sick or feel like they might be ill to stay home. And uh, so we discontinue any incentives for perfect attendance or very good attendance uh, because we don't want to send mixed messages. We want folks to take care of themselves first. Um, how much money was spent in phase one on the flyers and the extra supplies and cleaning items? And how, how is that being paid for with, since it was all unexpected? Well, I don't have the dollar amount for you. Um, it is coming from the appropriate resources. So, for instance, we do have custodial supplies, and they have a budget that's allocated. The, um, Angie Henry mentioned last night that there is a need to move money to that fund. If we exhaust the fund, then they would come to the board for that request. And the same thing is true for communications. Our communications team has a budget um, for communicate for sharing communication materials, um, and as needed, we would increase that. So, so far, everything has just been within your already allocated budgets, and you'll adjust accordingly if needed later yes. on? OK, yes. thank you. Um, if you do have to close school, will teachers continue to get paid, and bus drivers and all of the staff, or will everything remain the same? Or what will happen if you do have to close schools? Uh, that's an issue that the district is discussing. Uh, there are some folks who in the school district who could actually do work from home. There are other employees, such as principals and teachers. There are other employees who could not do their work at home, as you can imagine, to include bus drivers and cafeteria workers. Uh, that's something that the administration is discussing uh, and hope to uh, get some more solid answers there as we go forward. And school nurses are over already overwhelmed and they're already traveling between schools. Is there a plan in place for them? Is there a plan to get more nurses into schools? Our health, our health department is our partner with our school nurses. Um, they provide them to our schools, and they've been very responsive. And we've made a few requests for additional nurses in certain places, and they've been responsive um, to meet those needs for us. I foresee if there are other concerns, we would do the same thing during our daily call to share that concern with them. Um, but they've always, up to this point, been very supportive. How many additional nurses have you requested for? I don't know the exact number. I think we just requested about two additional nurses, one to two. Our nurses have done a fantastic job. I'd like to respond to that as well. Our nurses and our, so I often say that the public health department has done a great job. So they are an extension of the health department. So I do want to say that our nurses are very responsive. So they do travel to a few different schools, um, but they have been um, quick to address the concerns out of school. They have not, and they have not complained, not one bit, nor said that they were overwhelmed. So we are very grateful for their support. And they were, have been trained to do this, and they've done an outstanding job for us. I'll ask after you. You can go. go ahead. OK. I'm sure you're constantly disinfecting schools because kids get sick all the time. So how much have you ramped up disinfecting and cleaning those schools? Could you give an example? Uh, one example is cleaning school buses twice a day. Uh, disinfecting those and putting hand sanitizers on those buses. Uh, we've also prioritized some really high frequency areas in schools to include media centers, certainly school locker rooms and athletic facilities. Uh, the, the, it's important to note that once you clean them, you have to do it again uh, pretty frequently, but uh, we're, we're committed to doing that. One other thing that I would add that we clean, that we're also cleaning, um, having additional cleaning is our art supplies. So you might take for granted PE equipment and art supplies, um, but we are cleaning those as well because they're usually shared by several students. And so they're being cleaned daily as well throughout, or in throughout the day and in between classes. Are you guys doing anything for athletic events or games scheduled between schools? Are you taking precautions there? Uh, we are monitoring developments across the state of North Carolina very closely, and it's our understanding that as of today, there are no confirmed cases in Guilford County, but should that occur, we, would, we have it certainly on our radar to think about uh, whether or not we'd have large gatherings at athletic events and other events where there are lots of people. Winston-Salem Forsyth County Schools just canceled all travel and field trips. At what point will it take for you guys to do the same? We're reviewing those on a, day by, on a daily basis, and it could change any day. 
as I shared, that we um, have daily meetings. The first meeting is a conference call that we have. I have at 8.30 with my team to review what's going on in our nation to make sure we're all on the same page. And then we meet throughout the day with the superintendent's cabinet, and those decisions we make timely and we'll share. It might, it should go without saying, but we're also reminding our students in schools not to share food and water bottles and drink out of the same uh, uh, bottles and things of that nature so that uh, we practice really good hygiene in the schools. <laughs> um, if you, if parents do have to stay at home with a kid because of school closure, or because of illness, or something, are there plans in place for you know what are you suggesting parents to do if you know someone in their school is sick but the kid is fine, they still have to stay home 14 days? Is there something you're recommending for parents to do with their kids, or to you know parents don't have an option if they have to work? Uh, you mean in terms of their schoolwork and the academic work? Or? No, parents having to stay home from work. You know, with snow days, a lot of parents sure. are scrambling last minute. They obviously, if a kid in a class or a school. I, th I think that's one of the reasons that we wanted to have uh, a really good plan and to get that plan communicated well in advance to parents so that they could make those contingency plans for their children just like they have to do on snow days. There's a lot of panic going on surrounding coronavirus. What sort of language are you using with parents and teachers and administrators to maybe subdue that panic? Because I've seen in other districts, other states, a lot of parents are picking up their kids with masks on, and I don't think it's gone to that level here, but what sort of language are you using? We're using the language of prevention. We're sharing with them clear information about the symptoms being fever, cough, and shortness of breath. We're also sharing with them strategies to make sure that um, they're similar to the flu strategies because those same strategies and Dr. Watlington and I have, we normally That's shake right. hands, but we all, we only do elbow taps now. And so we've listed and we've publicized those preventative measures. And so we're suggesting those to families as well and to be aware of what those symptoms are. And if they feel that they have those symptoms or their children or their family members to reach out to their healthcare professional. So we'll model that for you one more time. Okay. <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a Thank wonderful you. day.